Hi everyone, it's Emily and today's day 87 of the Odin Project. I'm completing the JavaScript course and I'm currently working on the Binary Search Trees project. The purpose of this project is to create a factory function which will build a binary search tree and will also contain methods that allow you to manipulate the binary search tree. Since my last vlog, I did rewrite one of my basic functions for this project, which is the build tree function. The left hand side of the screen shows my original code for this function and the right hand side of the screen shows my rewritten code. I'm gonna talk through some of my problem solving for this to show you how I went from the left side of the screen to the right side. There were several resources within the binary search trees lesson that walk you through exactly how to write a function which creates binary search trees. But all of these functions would take a sorted array as input, as well as a start and an end. The start indicates the index at which the array starts and the end indicates the index at which the array ends. And the reason that you take the start and end as inputs is because you recursively call this function on the left hand side and the right hand side of the array and so you can just manipulate the start and end variables to indicate which part of the array that you'd like to keep recursively calling. Now the issue that I ran into is that with our project we are supposed to be able to take an array as input that is unsorted and that has duplicate numbers. And then part of the project is that we're supposed to make sure that we sort that array and that we remove any duplicate numbers. Well, if we're removing duplicate numbers, then the length of the array is going to change and the start and end indices are going to change. So I was getting really tripped up. I wasn't sure how to incorporate start and end as inputs for this function. Hence, I developed this function on the left, which just takes an array and then it will sort and remove duplicates and then it will slice the array and recursively call it to build the binary search tree. So it works. It's just a lot more complicated than it needs to be. And how I came to my solution is that I took a step back and I thought about the project more as a whole and reread the instructions. And I realized that the goal is to create this tree factory function, which calls the build tree function. And so within the tree factory function, I can take an array and then I can sort it and I can remove the duplicates just in the beginning of that function and then pass that sorted and reduced array into the build tree function. So once I realized that, then I was able to rewrite my function in a more simple way, following the guidance from all of the materials that were provided as part of this lesson. And it's much easier to read and understand now. I also rewrote my node factory function, which takes a value and then creates a node with a left hand and a right hand value, which are by default set to null. So to demonstrate the methods that I worked on for my tree factory function, I did set a variable test equal to an array that contains unsorted numbers with some duplicates. And then I set test equal to tree factory of test. So I just passed it into my tree factory function. I just pulled up my DevTools console so that I can show you some demonstrations of the methods that I created. So you can see here if I pass my test variable in, then it returns my binary search tree, which is not very pretty like this, but I can use the pretty print function, which again is a function that's provided in the instructions for this project, which allows us to have a visual of our binary search tree. So the first method that I created is called insert node pretty straightforward. It inserts a node in the appropriate place of the binary search tree. So essentially it takes a root node and a value as inputs, and then it traverses the binary search tree, comparing the value against the data of that root node to see if the value is higher or lower. And then it traverses the tree appropriately until it reaches a leaf node where it inserts the node. 
So I can show you an example. We can do test.insert node. We pass our root node in as test.root. And then we can insert the number 12. And then I will print it. So you can see that we have inserted a 12 into our binary search tree. The next method is called delete node. This takes a root node and a value, and then it will traverse the binary tree until it finds the node that matches that value, and then it deletes the node. So it works in a somewhat similar fashion to insert node, but we do have to account for a couple different cases. So for example, if we want to delete a node that doesn't have any children, that's pretty easy. We can just delete the node and everything else in the tree stays the same. If we want to delete a node that has one child, so for example, if we want to delete nine and it has 12 as its child, we just replace nine with its child and then everything else in the tree remains the same. Where it gets a little bit more complicated is if you want to delete a node that has two children. So for example, if we wanted to delete this seven, then what we'd have to do is traverse the right hand branch and find the lowest value and then that value replaces the node that we're deleting and then we have to make sure that we delete that value out of the right hand branch as well so it's not duplicated in the search tree. For example, I can do test.delete node, test.root is our root node and then we can delete the seven and then we'll print this. And you can see that the seven gets replaced by the eight and then everything else sort of reorganizes based on that. And I did use a helper function for this method called min value. And that is the function that does traverse the right hand branch to find that smallest value that we use to replace our deleted node. The next method is called find, and this accepts a root node and a value, and then it traverses the binary search tree until it finds the node that matches that value, and then it returns the node. This one's pretty straightforward. You essentially just compare your value to each node, and then you recursively call the find function to traverse down the binary search tree, and whenever you find the node whose data matches the value, you just return that node. So we can do test.find, test.root, and then we can do six, and it returns the six node. Lastly, I just wrote the level order method. This one took me a while to wrap my head around. I think the directions are a little bit unclear in the project instructions, but essentially this function takes a root node and a callback function, and it traverses the binary search tree using breadth first search, which is essentially where you go level by level visiting all of the nodes in that level before you move on to the next level. So looking at this binary search tree, level one would be right here where the five is. So we visit five first. Then we move to level two. So we visit two and eight. Then we move on to level three. We visit one, three, six, nine, etc. So with this particular level order method, if we pass a callback function as an argument, then as it traverses the binary search tree for each node that it visits, it passes that node into the callback function. So it really doesn't matter what the callback function is doing. The main idea is that we can insert any function that we want as an argument and be able to traverse the binary search tree passing each node into that function. And then if we don't pass a callback function, then the function will return an array that just contains the values of all of the nodes that it visits. So I'll show you how this works. We can write test.levelOrder test.root and then I created just a simple function called printMe, which you'll see here to the right. 
that takes a node and then it will just console.log print and then the data from that node. So if we call this, then it does that for each node that it visits. And if you see it goes five, two, eight, one, three, it does it in the correct order, five, two, eight, one, three, et cetera. And then if we test this, except we don't include a callback function, then it just returns the array showing all of the nodes that were visited. Tomorrow I'm going to be working on some methods involving depth first search. So I will be using pre-order, in-order, and post-order traversal of the binary search tree. That's all that I have for today. If anyone's interested in more detailed review of how my code works line by line, I'd be happy to make that. Always feel free to just pop that in the comments below. Otherwise, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you have a great day and I will see you next time.